Hello everyone. Today we are going to be discussing linear transformations and matrix algebra. Linear transformation and matrix algebra is one of the most important concept that I think everyone should understand if they want to be a good software engineer, good ML scientist, good AI engineer, good data scientist, whatever the fancy term is, I think we should really understand what a function is. Why? Because at the end of the day, everything and anything that you're doing around you, any kind of action is actually a function. How so? Because you give an input to a function and then you get the required output. So the whole fundamental aspect is actually to create systems wherein you can put in the input and then get the output in the format you want in the first place, right? So for instance, if you have machines, you want your jobs to be done faster and in an easier way. That's why you use the machines so that you can just give in certain instructions and then you can get the output in the required format you want. This is one example. Second example is some kind of a future prediction. So you have all the information required and with that set of information, you want to create a function such that if you plug in more values, future values to it, you're able to predict certain things by just plugging in the values in those functions. So it helps to make future predictions. I mean, let go of the math part of functions. Just think the day-to-day -day activity, all the actions that we ever do, all the beings doing any actions, all a function. Why? Because you're plugging in some values and then you're getting the output. For instance, let us take an example of exercising. So if I'm exercising, my organs and body parts are moving and coordin coordinating in some certain specific formats, right? So this becomes the input and then the output is a fit body, right? So any action that you do is a function. And since it is a function, that means whatever you give to it, that is whatever actions you do, you will get the corresponding output. And that's how your life becomes, whatever day-to-day -day activities you do, right? So you see how important the function is if you understand it mathematically and then apply it to day-to-day -to -day understanding. Okay, just an FYI here, I will be using two terms interchange interchangeably, transformations and function, but they refer to one and the same thing. Transformation is just a little more fancy term to represent functions, but it's still the same thing because you take the input, you transform the input, and then you get a different output. That is why the word transformation. So the primary aim is to learn about linear transformations and their relationships to matrices. In practice, one is often lead to ask questions about the geometry of transformation. That is a function that takes an input and produces an output. This kind of question can be answered by linear algebra if the transformation can be expressed by a matrix. So here what we are trying to do, the function that is the f of x that we have. No, no, no. That's bad. Here. Yeah. So what we're trying to do here is the function, which is f of, sorry, f of x. We're trying to replace this function as a matrix. So we are defining a function in the form of matrix and then using that matrix to multiply it with some form of vector spaces to see the output. This is what we're going to be doing throughout this session and the next few sessions. So let us take an example here. We have a robotic arm which, which is inclined over three angles on the three corners. Depending upon what the value of these angles are, it defines the position of this robotic arm, correct? So say for instance, if my theta was more of an obtuse angle, right? So then the position of this robotic arm would change with respect to x and y position. And so, with the help of these three angles, at any point in time, I can predict where exactly the robotic arm will be, right? So this is again an example of a function. So this example of a function is not linear in nature. It is rotational. So it's not what we are covering at this point in time. This comes under what is called as kinematics and inverse kinematics. And we're not discussing it right now. I gave this example just to bring, um, just to let you guys know that we will be having a discussion about this topic a little later down the line. And we will see how such a complex model can be applied to AI models and neural analysis. 
all right that's why the example strictly for the next few slides we will be focusing on functions which are linear in nature and we will be studying them briefly so the objectives learn to view a matrix geometrically as a function learn examples of matrix transformation that is reflection dilation rotation shear projection if you come from open cv background or you've done uh, what is called as computer vision problems you know what exactly a reflection dilation rotation shear projection stands for just in case if you do not have that background that's fine too you'll understand the underlining math behind these concepts so when you decide to learn open cv or use computer vision programming stacks you'll already know what these concepts are mathematically understand the terminology and concepts associated with domain codomain and range use pictures to understand commonly used matrix transformations so these are some of the things we are going to be discussing in this session now matrices as a function let us take an example here i have a function f of x which is x squared so if i put the value of x as let's say 2 then 2 squared is 4 so the output becomes 4 this is a function in itself x here is an independent variable because you can put any value here and then depending upon the value you're putting here you get the output which is fx in this case so this is a function now let us map this representation to the matrix formation all right so we know from the matrix equation that b equals ax we've seen this equation so many times since the start of the sessions and you already know how important this equation is here a is the matrix which has n number of rows and n number of columns x is the independent variable and y becomes the dependent variable canonical form for this representation is actually y equals fx the same one y equals fx so here y is b f of x is the function is matrix here and x becomes the independent variable so the the representation of the functional aspect of this linear equation is represented by a matrix now this is the relationship between the two let us take an example so the independent variable that is the input is a vector of r of n and the dependent variable which is the output is a vector of r of m i don't have to repeat which was row and which was column because i just said that so this is a matrix here this has three rows and three columns so both n and m are three and three since it's a it's a matrix in three dimensional space so the vector space coordinates will be x y and z if i multiply the first row with x just in case if you've forgotten how the matrix multiplication works i'll link the url to an older video which explains about the multiplication in the description box but again i'm doing a quick multiplication here one multiplied by x plus zero multiplied by y plus zero multiplied by z is x similarly zero multiplied by x plus one multiplied by y plus zero multiplied by z is y and then 0 multiplied by x is 0 plus 0 multiplied by y is 0 plus 0. So this is itself 0. So we started with a vector which had three dimensional space and then mapped it to a vector which is in just two dimension. This is a very important problem. It might not be very intuitive at this point in time. What's so big about it that you've had x, y, z as three you know you had three vectors three dimensional vector space and then so what you got it you got them into two dimensional space what is the big deal right now for me it's a little hard to explain but when we apply this information if sorry when we apply this understanding to a real world problem this will be quite clear why this is so important because you know when you I'm sorry, I'm getting into the technicalities again, but just for the viewers who already have ML and AI background, we have dimensionality problem, right? We've heard things like dimensionality is a curse and then you're supposed to break down the dimensionality to less, less number of dimensions because you have redundant column informations, correct? So that's what we try to do. But this reduction of dimension is very different than the dimensionality curse we talk about in ML, all right? That's because... That's more of a parametric representation, what I was talking in the previous sessions. 
that one column is actually dependent on other columns so you can skip that column altogether but this ch changing the dimensional space in itself is a very different problem statement it's like you have a 3d visual of something and then you are mapping it into 2d so you have to map it in such a way that the information is still stored of uh, the intricate information is still stored so this has much more math involved and it's not similar to just reducing the number of columns in your data set okay and just in case to other viewers you know those who do not have this background they're just studying it to study the math aspects of it just skip what i said because when we will get the, we'll get into ml and ai this will become more clear all right so here i had a vector which was spanning in three dimensions x y z and now the output is just a vector which is spanning in two dimension which is x and y and so the representation of this vector will just be something like this, this is an example of projection so in the x y plane the vector is just simply projecting itself let's take an example which is reflection example so now a equals minus 1 0 0 1 this is a matrix in two dimension so the vector space that we will be taking will also be a vector in two dimension which is x and y let us multiply them so minus 1 0 0 1 you've multiplied it minus 1 multiplied by x plus 0 multiplied by y is 0 this becomes minus x 0 multiplied by x plus 1 multiplied by y is y so this is your final output this means that this has flipped on the x-axis right so it was the image would have been first or the value or the data set would have been on the positive side of x-axis but after multiplying it with this function it has so it's on the negative side of the x-axis so it's there's a flip on the horizontal axis on the x-axis so if we have to understand this with an image this is how the image is right so this is my x-axis here and this has actually been flipped on the x-axis so this is called as reflection now what is important to see here is that such a conversion if you're using any programming language you just invoke a function in your code you give the path of your image or you give the path of some data set that you have represented in the form of vector space or any kind of wherever you are holding your data set it can be any data structure you call that function and then you do a reflection of the values or the image inside that code right so underlining logic or the underlining math of that function is actually a matrix whose values might be similar to something like this so isn't it awesome that you're not just understanding that you are supposed to invoke a stupid function but you know what exactly is the math behind that function which the programmers or the programming stack developers are using isn't that a very crucial piece of information because if you know that then you can actually devise your own frameworks and programming languages and then be a much smarter version of yourself right so that is why it is important to understand the maths behind what you are doing always so this is a flip on the x-axis dilation is when you are zooming in your values so this is my function here 1.5 0 0 1.5 you multiply with x and y because this is a matrix in two it has two rows and two columns this becomes 1.5 multiplied by x plus 0 multiplied by y which is 1.5 x this is 0 multiplied by x plus 1.5 multiplied by y which is 1.5 y this means that the whole thing the whole input x and y that you've given is actually scaled up by 1.5 times so our image will be scaled up version of its original format so this is a dilation example and even i think dilation is also something we commonly use in computer visions to understand the parametric characteristics of the images just in case if the image is not very clear and things like that right just to get the pixel information correctly so if you're just invoking some function in you know uh, what do you say open cv just to understand this or you're just calling some stack in python directly you are invoking some you know libraries for this you know that those libraries underliningly follow what is called as dilation matrix function or something similar on that grounds similarly we can talk about the next example which is identity example this is um, this is the function where you have one zero in the first row and zero one on the first second row and you're multiplying it with x and y 
So 1 multiplied by x plus 0 multiplied, this is 1x, 1y. So you started with x and y and you got the output back. So this is an identity example. Why would you need an identity example? You know, I mean, you're just throwing the input and then getting the output back. So let me phrase it like this. Sometimes when you do successful or sometimes when you are failing badly, you want someone to show you a mirror about yourself that you know what you're exactly doing. Is it right or wrong? Correct? So that's precisely an identity function even in mathematics. When we will apply this to the data set, it will become more evident. But just to summarize an intuitive nature of an identity function, it's just like showing a mirror to a person who's lost the path. All right. So you can just see yourself in the mirror compare. What you look in the mirror is what you want to be. If the answer equals equals yes, keep doing what you're doing. If the answer equals equals no, then change it. Similarly, in the case of machine learning, AI, whatever strategy has been implemented or whatever output you've got, you pass it through an identity function. If what you see is good enough and it can be fine-tuned and parameterized, then go ahead, follow the same strategy. But if it cannot be, then you are supposed to be changing your strategy. So that's where you're going to be using identity functions. Still, if this is not clear where exactly how the implementation aspects work with ML and AI, that's totally fine because my aim is not to jump into ML and AI at this point. The aim is for you to get hold of the concept. So we're good as long as you know what identity function or identity matrices do. We're good. The next example is rotation examples. The function for something like this will be 0, minus 1, 1, 0. You have x and y. So you multiplied 0 with x is 0 plus minus 1 multiplied by y is minus y and this is x. So there's a rotation happening here. Let's project this. So my input is 1 and 2 which is 1 on the x-axis and 2 on the y-axis. And then I rotated it. So that means my y was on minus of x. So my minus y and x was my output. So this becomes minus 2 on the x-axis and 1 on the y-axis. This is a rotation by 90 degree. Similarly, this one, which is my input is minus 1 on the x-axis, but positive 1 on the y-axis. So minus 1 on the x-axis and positive 1 on the y-axis. My, my output is again swift. This comes on top with the minus sign and x is intact. So this becomes minus 1 here and this becomes minus 1 here. And in this example, when a is 0 minus 2, which is somewhere here, and then when you're projecting it, again, it is rotated and the values come on the x-axis. So this is a rotation example of a 90 degree rotation. That was an example of a 90 degree rotation. So here you see an image in this format and it has been rotated by 90 degrees pretty much. So now you know if you guys are Mac users, how underlining Mac uh, Mac OS is actually making a conversion. Isn't that really awesome? Mm, not that much. What's the big deal? Yes. Yeah, I think so too. No big deal. A equals 1, 1, 0, 1, x and y. So you multiply. It's extended on the x-axis and y value is same. So that's shear. So it's just, you know, it's just moving or stretching on the, what should I say, on the x-axis. So this is a shear example. So that's pretty much it. I hope it made sense how you can represent functions in the form of matrices. And then when you have done that, you take those matrices and then plug in the vector values or values to your, you know, your data set and then check for the output. So this was pretty much the aim. If you have any questions, feel free to get in touch with me through the comments box or through my website.